Welcome to the Character Chronicles, the People Show. Take the post rescue nation brought to you by Nebraska Spine Hospital. Today I have a special guest. I'm joined by former Husker cornerback uh, Dewan Gross. He owns school records for pass breakups in a single season with 17. He also set or tied four different school records and set an NCAA record as well. Consensus All Big 12. First team AP All-American as a punt returner. And something I did not know, Dewan, Dewan and Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Rogers are the only players in Nebraska history to amass a 1,000 career punt return yards. How you doing, my friend? Uh, I'm doing good. Can't complain. Well, I appreciate your time. I want to thank you for joining me. And the first question when you agreed to come on the show that popped into my head, I remember being a freshman. And back then, mm-hmm. when you when you were red shirt and you had to sit in the stands, okay, and mm-hmm. you, I think you had four punt returns that year for a touchdown. I remember every time you go back for a punt return, the fans, especially the student section in that south end zone, would start chanting, gross, 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 gross. You just get faster, 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 faster. So what's it like waiting for a kick, okay, waiting to return that punt, and the fans are chanting your name? What's that feeling like? Uh, it's pretty unbelievable. I mean, just even just the fans in general, you know, coming from playing at Nebraska, everybody knows our biggest draw is our fans. Yep. And we play for our fans within the state, and they're, and they're all over. Because I know here in Texas, we do have watch parties here in Texas for Nebraska games. So hearing that during the game is unbelievable. I mean, just right before the kick is great. And then once the kick gets up, I don't hear nothing. <laughs> That's a good thing. I pretend to block it out. So once it, I focus on the ball and then go from there. So talk to me, because Nebraska's had some decent punt returners, but they haven't really had a dynamic punt returner since DeMorne Pearsonell was a freshman. Mm-hmm. So what's the biggest key to breaking a big punt return or just at least getting good punt returns, kick returns on a consistent basis? Uh, I think our, my thing is we, we've made it more of a trust. It's mainly trusting your guys, um, your teammates. That's the biggest thing, trusting your teammates to – do where get where they was supposed to be. I know Coach Jamrod. One thing for us as a a unit is I didn't fair catch no balls, so it was no fair catching at all. So if I got hit, it was going to be uh, on one of my teammates for not making the right play of uh, blocking somebody. So we didn't fair catch. If you ever look back at the field, we never fair caught any ball from my junior year to my senior year. You know, Coach Jan Rod took over special teams. You know what's funny is I actually asked Johnny Rogers the exact same question. What is uh, the, the biggest key to having a good punt return, kickoff return? And he said, never fair catching the ball. He said, having the attitude of every time I catch it, I'm going to bring it out no matter what. It's literally the nope. same answer. That's crazy. Yep. Must be is, a, that, is that what he said for real? That is what he said. If you go back and listen to the interview I did with him a month, wow, maybe two ago. Wow, that's crazy. Basically the same thing. It's having I'm, that attitude, I'm always going to bring it out no matter what. So, actually, I'm curious about your answer on the next question. So, the new kickoff rule, you can basically okay. fair catch it. It used to be you had to be in the end zone. Now you could be at the 50-yard line if you wanted to fair catch it. Obviously, mm-hmm. you wouldn't do that. But you can fair catch it anywhere between the, the goal line to the 25-yard line, and you get the yep. ball at the 25. What are your thoughts on that rule? Um, I mean, it takes a little bit away from the, the action of the play, but I get why they do it. I mean, I guess one thing I'm a I'm actually a referee, so oh, okay, I, I do not know that. game, so I get it. Yeah, to what they're trying to do, but at the same time, for the love of the game, it kind of takes away from it. Um, but it helps. I mean, f- as far as offense, it helps them out tremendously because they can get it at the 25, no matter where they fair catch it at inside that 25, they'll get it at the uh, where they need to get it at. So it's a big deal. For the offense. Now, on the defensive side, it can kind of hurt us now, if you're a defensive player. Where are you refereeing at? I referee here in Texas. So I referee here and do the big uh, 5A, 6A Texas high school. I mean, we follow NCAA rules here. So I, the ruling is all the rules are still the same for what I when I played. I mean, we got some things that change. But I did do college for a while. Uh, once I got – I kind of – kicked back from college because my kids got involved in uh, select sports, so I had to give those Saturdays up because yeah. my wife wasn't having it. Yeah, I, I get that, man, having six mm-hmm. six kids and five of them in sports. But 
So I got a, I got a question because, man, mm-hmm. I, co- I coach fifth grade basketball, and when I have to ref our scrimmage in practice, I freaking hate it. The kids hate oh. when I do it. I suck at it. Uh, right. I don't really care, to be honest, because I want to coach. And so right. have you ever had a player, a coach, a parent mm-hmm. go a little too far with their complaints? And if so, how did you handle it? Um. Yeah, I, I, I actually, I mean, it's it happened several times. Yeah. But, uh, the one stuck out to me. We had a um, a state championship game, and uh, was coaches going crazy over a call, and it went all the way until they called the timeout, and he still was talking about the play. And the basic, basically, all you got to do for me, I'm as everybody knows, I'm pretty calm. So yeah. I, I can diffuse and listen. I like to listen, just talk. And if I can get the answer, I'll get you the answer. But I'm not going to go back and forth with the coach and, and um, keep rolling them up. But just try to get them, explain to them what happened. And if I can get the answer, get the answer. If not, we'll just we'll say, Coach, we, we missed it or something like that and just move on. Because if you keep dwelling on that play, they're going to keep coming back and firing. And, the, and if you give them the opportunity that you're going to be talking back they're going to keep firing at you oh no doubt about so that if you keep, oh yeah they're going to keep firing <laughs> at you so if you keep it calm and keep it moving you don't have too much they don't have too much to say anyway all right so i'm and curious stand your ground and you have to stand your ground yeah for sure no doubt about that now i'm curious how much have you of the huskers have you been able to watch specifically their secondary and if you've been able to watch very much what are your thoughts on their secondary especially where they have three of their four returning starters coming back this year uh, I think it's a good thing. Um, I have watched some games, and actually, I have been in the film room and watched some film. Uh, uh, Coach Fisher is with my old teammate from St. Louis, so okay, we have a good relationship. So I do keep in, keep up with the secondary and see how they well they're doing. And I mean, they were young. I mean, we got to think they, there were some young guys out there, and they're trying to get guys playing. Uh, I think it's going to be a better uh, year this year with the guys just getting some reps in even though that season was kind of weird this year. So, but I think as far as the secondary, he's a great coach. He's trying to put him in the right positions. He, he knows what he's talking about. And I think, um, once the season progresses, you're going to see a dramatic change with the secondary as the experience happens. Basically just getting those reps and getting that experience. Just getting those reps in, getting those reps in. I mean, one, one thing I can say from when we were playing, I mean, we had the scout team, but that was a big thing. We got so many reps. By the time we got to the game, we were pretty ready to go at the time. So that's one of the things I think um, was that we were missing with the scout team because we had so many scout teams. We had we can go all the way down to, what, six, six depths mm-hmm. and still perform. And some of them guys were – and then some of them guys were real – a lot of them were good athletes you know, on the scout team and got scholarships from that. So when you have that type of competition, them still trying to work, it makes us better as first team offense, first team defense or second team defense or uh, second team offense. Yeah, when I first got to Nebraska under Solich, we'd have mm-hmm. we'd have three different fields going. Offense versus exactly. defense here, offense versus de- – and just three different fields going. So um, right. I, I got a question for you because everybody's a little bit different. Um, mm-hmm. Were you more – like, did you prefer man coverage? Did you prefer zone coverage? Were you more of a press type guy like a Darrell Rivas, more of a, a mm-hmm. cover three, maybe a bail type guy like Richard Sherman? What did you prefer? Uh, we press. Me, I mean, that's what I when I got there with uh, Coach McBride. We we was all about pressure, so we was jamming at the line. Uh, we played off, but we didn't play really too much zone. We played a little bit of zone. If we did run some type of zone, we was either blitzing out of the zone. Or uh, that was it, really. We pretty much was man all game. We really didn't have too much zone at the time when I was in school. Um, what's the f- who was the funniest teammate you've ever had, or who funniest are some funniest teammate. funny teammates you've had? T- Tony Ortiz. <laughs> all right, you got a story? Flat out, Tony Ortiz. Tony was he can he could imitate any coach any player at at will. It didn't even matter. So I know we used to get on uh, Darren Dietrich at the time. He used to get on Darren Dietrich and 
and because he had the uh, little accent, mm-hmm. he's from Canada, Canada and stuff. So, yep. oh my goodness! And this is this is right at the time that uh, everybody was worried about uh, Y two J, uh, Y two K. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they used to call him Y two J, the year of the juggernaut. So okay. It was. Oh, he was hilarious. He was from Canada, eh? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll never forget being able to imitate coaches is a great skill that always entertains a team. And I'll never forget uh, about my third or fourth years when Callahan came in and Lydon Murphy okay. did the best Bill Callahan impression. And you could just oh, really? tell Callahan hated. Like he'd sit there with a smile on his face, but his eyes said a totally different story than the fake smile exactly. on his face. <laughs> coaches actually don't do like that. that, even though they'll pretend they do. Is there a, a game that you played in that particularly sticks out in your mind? Like, man, that was a, a great win, or maybe even, hey, man, that was that was a particularly tough loss from your career at Nebraska. Uh, great win. I say that as far as a great win when we played Oklahoma at home um, in two thousand one. Yep. With Eric and Stunts and even Thunder Collins at the time set up that play to win that game. Yep. That was just unbelievable. That's probably my, as the best win, like an overall team effort to win that game. That was one of our better games as a team to win that game from special teams, defense, and offensively. Um, but the most memorable game for me, though, it's still going to be memorable for me, is the Rose Bowl, playing in the Rose Bowl yeah. in the national championship game. I was a, I grew up as a Big Ten kid, so all I knew was Ohio State and Michigan and Rose Bowl, that was all I knew about and was able to get the chance to be uh, playing at Nebraska and be able to play in the Rose Bowl, that was the ultimate for me. That's right. You were an Ohio kid. That's right. Mm-hmm. So what are you up to now? Like, what, what are you doing nowadays? I know you're reffing down in Texas. Is there something mm-hmm. in particular, maybe something you'd like the people to know about, maybe you want to promote while you got a got a chance here? Yeah, I mean, right now, yeah, I do a little refereeing as far as strictly high school here. Um, me and my wife started a company. Um, it's called uh, Behind the Dream for Success. Okay. Um, with that, we are are a company that will be raised, um, have doing custom orders, basically for T-shirts or memorabilia stuff for student athletes or youth athletes that are trying to raise money for teams or travel or anything like that. So what we do as a company, um, we um, make the t-shirts so we'll create team stores for the uh for the uh, team and set a time and an uh, end date and they'll fundraise instead of going out buying popcorn and yeah selling coupons and stuff like that this will actually um give you the the, the uh players the ability to sell t-shirts of their sales so we can customize t-shirts so we'll get images from the either the parents or the team and then we can customize that picture and actually sell that picture on the T-shirt for that kid. And then part of the proceeds will go back to that team as they do their fundraiser. Very cool. Now, where can people find so, you at? Is there a website? Yeah, we'll have a website up. It's getting built right now as we speak. Um, it's going to be uh, BT, BTD for um, the number four, uh, okay. success.com. I right, check that out, folks. That website will be up soon. Hey, I remember, obviously, this was like Little League, man, but I remember going door-to-door selling candy bars. So this is like a million exactly. times better than when I had to do that. So Yeah, so, yeah, we yeah we did the same thing. You do that with car wash. So we're trying to keep the kids out of the street and just have to sell their own stuff. Yeah, car washes too, man. I, I, that brings mm-hmm. up memories right you there. Those days. Thank you again for joining me. I appreciate your time. I oh, appreciate it. All right, until next time, Husker Nation, go Big Red. And always remember... Throw those bones. Thanks again to our sponsor, Nebraska Spine Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, when it's your spine, you do not want to mess around and experience matters. That's why you can trust the experts at Nebraska Spine Hospital, the region's only spine-specific hospital. They are the best at what they do.